Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, it's brought to you by Linode, the best hosting company out there that I've worked with for over eight years now. They've just opened up a new location in Mumbai. So anybody that's trying to set up a business in India, make sure you give them a look. They're going to save you a lot of money over Azure and AWS. Also, they have pricing plans that work with pretty much anything that you want to do. So if anything you want to do runs on Linux, which is pretty much everything, then you can do it with a Linode uh, account. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I just want to go ahead and share one of the coolest projects in artificial intelligence that I've seen all year. Uh, and I want your feedback to see what you guys think as well. Uh, but we know that there's a lot of hype going on out there with uh, AI, you know, the singularity, artificial intelligence versus general intelligence, machine learning. Where does it all fit in? In a nutshell, machine learning is how computers can do things more efficiently than a, a human brain can, especially when they're operated to, um, and programmed to do so. Uh, there's no question that, you know, those speeds and capabilities of thinking in multiple dimensions are going to be much easier for a computer than it is for a human. Um, although then when you look at things like the basic neuron, how we learn, all this other stuff, there's still this huge, huge network, uh, th this huge, huge disconnect uh, between our neural networks of having to, you know, use back propagation to learn um, and then what our actual human brains do. So we don't really know yet, but the um, the consensus is that like general intelligence is probably going to be distributed neural networks, um, neural networks that deal with uh, sight and vision and all that stuff. And as they come together and you have massive supercomputers that are able to um, calculate all these neural networks um, in real time, much faster than human brain possibly could, that eventually we're going to start seeing the emergence of general intelligence. That's kind of the goal. That's the goal. That's the uh, that's what everybody thinks is going to happen. I think most people think that's going to happen versus uh, the majority of people that probably uh, think that it's not going to happen. I think that majority is much less. And we have already seen some impressive results with artificial intelligence and possibly even on a minor variance, uh, I would say general intelligence. So for instance, Google's DeepMind project was a small team of people that came together to build an artificial intelligence ma machine um, that learned how to play Go. And Go has way more possibilities than chess. And we've mastered being able to build automated machines with chess. And I, re I remember an old electronic board my grandfather had, like, and uh, he got it in the 80s, and it still worked in the early 90s when I was playing with it. But you had to, like, you know, set your positions and all that stuff. But it knew all the possibilities. We had all that mapped out decades ago is what my point is. Um, with something like DeepMind, though, they were able to, to beat the actual Go champion. So they, they built an artificial uh, intelligence machine that was programmed just for, you know, playing Go. Um, but they ended up beating the best person in the world, which a lot of people thought wasn't possible. So then Google's DeepMind project, though, they went a little bit further with AlphaZero. And AlphaZero, uh, instead of AlphaGo, is actually much more, um, it's much more lower level, and it has the ability to learn new games from scratch. So basically it starts uh, fr from its beginning states. It's able to teach itself not just Go, but other games as well, and do so relatively efficiently. Now, the thing is, is that like we still don't know if that's the way that we learn. We don't really know enough about neural networks and uh, of our own minds and um, and even like the, the single neuron and, and specifically how we learn. But some of the estimates is that eventually general intelligence is going to emerge through the ability of having access to so many different neural networks out there. And as more and more data is collected, shared and distributed, that these general intelligence machines that have capabilities beyond a human brain are going to be able to start thinking and coming up with results um, faster than we can probably keep up with. Now, what I don't like um, is when uh, OpenAI, which was originally originally started as a nonprofit company, they they kind of I think somewhat secretly kind of moved over to a for-profit company so that they could gain uh, investor dollars, right? Because companies want to invest in something that's going to have a return. And when you have this open organization that is tr strictly just looking out for humanity, it's not typically in line with business goals, right? And stock stockholders' goals. And everybody wants to make money, right? Um, and everybody wants to control the technology, which is why I don't like the billion-dollar investment from Microsoft into OpenAI, which is not any sort of organization that's looking out for our best interests. They are a for-profit company working with another major for-profit company to try to get, uh, capture the same market share that Google uh, is doing with their their um, with with their work as well. So they're trying to keep up, and they're not the only one. There's this other project called uh, CYC Corp, and CYC is actually one of the longest running artificial intelligence projects that has been out there right now. It's been running for about 34 years, just collecting data, analyzing, uh, and getting better and better. And actually, this is what IBM Watson was based off of, 
And it's also what is now, um, you know, being used all over healthcare because they have so much data and like they seem to be focused on on that uh, that aspect of it. But they are another for profit company, which is um, which is scary. So anytime you have these basically you have all these different companies right now, the biggest ones, IBM, uh, Microsoft, Google, probably Amazon and Apple as well, that they're trying to get into the AI field so that they can be the first ones to really come up with a product that they're going to be able to capitalize on. So let me go ahead and, and fast forward to the coolest project I've seen all year, and that is going to be Singularity Net. Singularity Net just got released, and this is actually a distributed neural network system uh, that is built on blockchain. So nobody is going to own this thing. That is the goal. Like when you want to try to uh, inter interact to it, this is just the, the beta version it just got released. But there are all kinds of neural networks that you can tap into right now on this platform. So the tutorials are on the website itself. If you guys want to check it out further, but you can see that they have examples here of how to build services in Python, Java, Go, and C++. All right. So while this is a brand new project and they're just getting started, I, I can't really speak for the you know any sort of bugs or anything like that. But here you can see what what um, this marketplace that they have available. So if you're trying to get into uh, speech recognition um like vision all this stuff so here's ai site so these are all different services that you can actually tap into uh, and they even have alpha zero um but these are just a few but the, the concept i think is what is the coolest so far when we talk about all, all the artificial intelligence and and the companies that are trying to um, really capture the power of you know the singularity i suppose so the, the, the this thing is is called singularity net maybe it's a little bit hyped up of a name but it's kind of cool i think as far as the project itself i think it's great that not one single company should have control over some sort of artificial intelligence machine that is literally analyzing all of our data that is given to it um you know in many cases without our permission if you look at what google's doing what um what all these companies are doing with their data collection practices it's all pretty much uh, almost criminal, you know, so like we don't get any return on that as the users submitting our data, whether it's even photos, voice recognition, all that stuff. We, we don't get any of that return except for a better product owned by one specific company. And that entire direction of AI sucks. So if we end up getting into a situation where we have so many different neural networks, we cross over some sort of threshold of horizon where the computer is able to just adapt and, and be able to read all these different neural networks and it does it better than than a human, which isn't really um inconceivable the the reason why this platform is great is because they have um tools that they're actually working on that they've already created uh that do things like tracking the actual data that you submit so if there's a company that that submits a bunch of biological information on research they've been doing and the neural network is actually using that to process and learn and other people are able to use that and gain from it that there is like a revenue sharing gener uh revenue sharing model um so that people that are submitting data uh, are also able to get a return on that. And we've been talking about that for a long time with actual user data. Like if I'm going around uh, Snapchatting and Instagramming all the time and I have photos all over the place and my photos are being used for image recognition and all that stuff, like, I mean, that's like a minor example. But the question is, uh, does somebody get a return on that? Probably not, but it would be an ideal world, I think, that uh, everybody got a return on the data that they were providing on the um, – because ultimately that data is providing better results for a company – but this is better because it's a blockchain type thing where nobody owns it, just like Bitcoin. Uh, so hopefully it, it takes off. But um, we're not here at the singularity yet. Uh, companies think the estimates are anywhere from like beyond 2020 to uh, no later than like 2050, a lot of people. So uh, that seems to be like the, the concern. And it's also very smart people that think that, you know, people like Larry Page from, from Google thinks this is one of the biggest, uh, you know, not this product, but you know, AI is one of the biggest fields in his lifetime and, and uh, it's going to change more things than anything so um, let's see how this all shapes up but i do want to share this project with you guys to see what you think uh, singularity net is brand new and i really like the creator behind it the guy that's been uh, running this he actually trained a lot of the uh the google DeepMind people because he's been in this field since the uh the late 70s actually so a uh, really smart guy and um he definitely thinks that it is, you know general intelligence is possible even with all the the stuff that i've pointed out and all the other people are pointing out with uh, simple learning problems, but he's really excited. This project, I think, is the coolest thing. I think um, when you compare it to something like OpenAI and all the hype that that gets, this project should get more. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.